we're nearly at the end of it. Um, I have continued in laps the whole way around. I had to squeeze in the eye there, but gold is wonderfully crushable, like I said before, so it will squeeze through tiny gaps like that, which we'll do. But just in this final part, I am changing the lap just in this absolute final section. So instead of going around and, and back, I am just going to fill these tiny circular bits. Sorry. Just doing a little switch back there, hold it down, and now I can make that final pass. So I just wanted to show you how crushable it is. Fill that little gap. If you can hear that noise in the background, that's my crazy Siamese cat, Felicity. Sounds like a baby crying. So I'm, I've got my finger coming up behind the linen and I'm sort of forcing a, a part. Um, and I'm just going to stick to the linen. I'm not going to pierce the gold at all. So when I go down, I'm still going to go down on the linen, hold that gold firm, finger in place, and bring that couching stitch quite taut to make it squeeze. Same again as we squeeze. So I've gone down in the linen again, holding the gold taut, hold it down with the nail, make it make it sit. And it's squeezed. Okay. Time for cutting and finishing it. I have secured my cotton thread onto the back and I'm now getting a needle. If you have one with a bigger eye, it's going to make your life with the gold a lot more gentle. You can thread it through the normal needle, but if you have something with a, a bigger, do it. So again, use, uh, give yourself lots of um, thread. And look at that instantly, it's, <laughs> it's fraying. So at this point I just treat it like a normal thread. Get them all through. This is why we don't sew with it. Um, hang on, I've got some pink stuff in here. Try and use a bigger eye where you can. So I have one last part to fill that I had planned for. So it's going to fill that final gap. Just wiggle it through if you're using the larger eye. He's got whiskers. So that's um, sitting nicely. So I'm going to turn it over and I am just going to thread. I'm just going to treat it like a normal thread. Threading through. This is why we have lots of length. 
We do not want to be mucking around with not enough length. I'm just going to change direction, put it through again, and snip it off. Sorry, can you see that? So back to the first thread that we ever used, which has become very tatty now. If you wanted to do this part at an earlier stage, you can. Um, remember where we planned where to put that stitch? Oh, we're going to do that right now. I can't remember where I planned to put it. Oh. So down it goes. Um, I would have liked to have filled that. I'm going to come back and put a little cotton couching stitch in there. Um, don't like that gap. And I will again secure it like we normally do. So I will spare you the gory details of this. Um, it's all come off. So I'm going to now re-thread it and change direction and perhaps pop it through those stitches there and snip it off. But now I have to go and re-thread. So, um, yes, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I love to help you and support you in your medieval stitching journey. I will answer you with videos. Um, if, if that's what's going to help. Um, yeah, so enjoy. It's a wonderful process, this um, medieval gold work. And uh, yeah, hopefully it brings us that one step closer to the hearts and minds of, of the folk back then. Okay, bye!